which is a bit of a pain in the ass, and trading is really about accepting things. Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, August 8, 2024, and this is the week in charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. So what are we talking about? Well, current market conditions, boy, well, I have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, feel free to type them in now. Your favorite stock picks. All right, Melbourne, Australia, checking in. Hello, Matt. And crypto picks. You're back to end. Uh, this week, I want to talk mostly about the methodology in action, spending a lot of time on options as a substitution for stock and, and let you know how I played everything. Some things you might question, and I get that. And I'm not sure that everything I should have done, I did. It worked out really nicely, but I, I did want to show you exactly what I did, at least in my model account. I want to talk a little bit about sticking with the trend and a brief TFM 10% update. And for me, little things, I just have one little thing I want to talk about this week, and maybe next week we'll pick it up in more detail. But this week I want to focus on spending a little time on trading transitions, understanding transitions. I think. Now's the time to really pay attention to what's happening in the markets. I mean, it's always time to pay attention, but now's really the time. It's not like one of these summers where it's just so damn choppy, you go off and go to the beach or whatever. Anyway, there's a flame screen. As you likely know, if you've been trading for more than one day, you can lose money trading. Or as often summing up, rip it off a line from my buddy Greg Morris. All predictions about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. There's all my contact information. If you want to take a screenshot of it, my email is david davidlander.com or davidlander.com slash contact. All right, let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action. This is this week's mystery chart. Notice that it topped out kind of a triple top looking top. And this was in spite of the market making all time highs back then. Big old thrust lower followed by a pullback. So that's tomorrow's recommendation. It is a short, and I will follow up on this one next week. So we finally, finally have a mystery chart. All right, now let's follow up on APH. And I wanna get into the options that we played on this, or I played on this at least. Anyway, uh, this was a bow tie. Now a bow tie, to those who don't know, let me go over it real quick. And you could study my website and YouTube channel. And of course, if you really want to learn about more about bow ties and all, you could buy something. But uh, before you do all that, you know, get to know me first and understand the pattern and before you get into the courses and such and become a member, of course, too. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in one second. But anyway, bow ties when the bow tie moving averages, which are a, a 10 simple, a 20 exponential, and a 30 exponential. So 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential come together and spread out quickly and give the appearance of a bow tie. Now, if you look below, this is an illustrator that I had programmed for me for bow ties. And I think that it's also in Metastock. It comes as a canned indicator. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. But if you have Metastock, I'm pretty sure it's in there. Also, this is stock charts. Advanced charting platform ACP. If you like this video, like this video, and then you can click the plug in down here and get it for free. I keep threatening to charge for it, but so far I haven't. It's actually the most sans the one I think that comes automatically loaded, or which is from stock charts. It's the second most popular, first most popular for uh, uh, what do you call those guys, whatever content providers. So very excited about that. Anyway, when it's an uptrend proper order, 10 grade, 20, 20 grade, 30. This counts the number of days. So it was many, many days, maybe 55 or so days where you had uptrend proper order and then begins to roll over to the downtrend proper order. Now, if it's neither uptrend or downtrend, meaning that the moving average is just kind of meandering back and forth and in no particular order, then it's yellow. So ideally you want to see it go from green to red for shorts or red to green for longs fairly quickly so you get the appearance of the bow tie sometimes it takes a while to cross and i call it a sloppy bow tie and if there's some other pattern there maybe it's worth trading but in general the tighter the bow tie the better because that means those moving averages came together quickly and have already begun to spread out quickly so notice we went from green to red that's one of the better looking ones a new client earlier was telling me he wants to learn more about stock selection well that's 
Stock selection is a million little things, and, and and I spent 14 hours in a course talking about it. But you can pick up a lot of that, not to talk you out of a course, seem to be talking about talking you out of buying stuff. But uh, you can learn a lot from from my YouTube channel and from my website, and then of course become a member and ask me a lot of questions too, or ask other members. But you want to learn these transitional patterns and and get used to, to finding them in charts and getting back to the pick of the best stocks like this gentleman was looking to learn, that would be one of the million little things. Look for tight bow ties when you're learning to trade these transitions. Now, I'll touch upon transitions a little bit because I think it's very important in a few minutes. But you want to look for the tight ones, meaning that they go from green to red fairly quickly. Uh, three to four bars is usually my normal parameters that I use for a, a fairly tight bow tie, but when they go from green to red immediately, that's even better. The other thing I like to do too is, and we get to the live charts, I'll show you this a little bit. I like to have a 50 simple plotted and I like to see the angle of inflection, especially on the downside, into that 50 simple moving average. And I'll show you that in one minute. Anyway, so I had a little bit of a pullback. Remember with these transitional patterns, we don't have the luxury of waiting for a nice big textbook kind of deep pullback or deepish pullback you sort of have to take the first one that comes along the first little pullback that comes along now in an ideal world it would pull back more deeply like for instance if it didn't have this this bar down here which actually triggered us in and rallied up a little bit higher that would be an even better setup and that's why i did take this secondary setup which i'll show you in a few minutes <clears throat> anyway uh <coughs> smooth <coughs> I gotta get some better vodka. Oh my God. <clears throat> anyway, there's the screen capture from the spreadsheet. Uh, 300 shares to short at 62. IPT of 55.50. That's uh, six and a half points. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess I have to save money elsewhere. Anyway. <laughs> An IPT of people don't know, like, oh, this guy's an alcoholic. <laughs> no, I don't. I usually don't drink during the week. But after this week, um, I think I'll drink. And I'll drink. Uh, we had to put a family pet down, like, at 2 in the morning at the emergency vet place. Um, a hawk murdered one of my chickens, which is, uh, or one of my wife's chickens, which are, these are all pets. <laughs> they have names, and they come when you call them, and they talk to you. So it's been a rough week. And, and you know, there's this thing called the market that's been all over the place, too. Anyway, uh, before I digress too far, imagine that. You can see that it did trigger, immediately went straight back up, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. And it's, trading is really about accepting things, okay? And one thing you're going to have to accept if you're going to short, and last week I talked about why you should short, and it's not the most obvious reason just to make money, there, because it's the only way to make money on the short side. But there are other reasons you should learn how to short. But anyway, if you are going to short, you better be ready to accept what comes with territory. And that is the old market adage. Now, a lot of adages are, are just BS, okay? Like sell them and go away. That's total BS. Um, I think uh, Tom McClellan did some presentations where it's actually sell in June. And it has a slight edge, but it's it's not anything you can trade off of. But that's another story altogether. But this is one, one adage that is fairly true. Is it seems like all shorts go against you. Shorts... Sometimes you have these sharp retrace rallies right after you get in, covering rallies, so to speak, and they can really muck you up. But fortunately, it did not hit the protective stop, did roll over, hit the IPT, and another, unfortunately, it rallied back up. Now, the stop was 62. Once we hit the initial profit target, we bring the stop down to break even. Now, we will trail that stop again before it's hit because I get asked that question repeatedly. But once it's actually hit, intraday will bring down the stop to break even, just in case it rallies back up and takes us out as it did in this case. Now, I don't suggest you throw caution to the wind, but in a case like this, if I was short outright shares, and I still have a few puts, just FYI, but if I was short outright shares, I probably would have let it go a little bit into the negative column. Ideally, you, when you get your first loaf off the thousand dollars on 100k right you want to break even at worst on the remainder but i am willing to let this the remainder go a little bit negative applying a little discretion if it just kind of goes barely past it or just barely nicks a stop then i'm definitely in 
in a case like this, it went about a half a point away on a sixty dollars stock, so it's not a huge difference. Difference, uh, it wouldn't make that big of a difference in your account. So I would say in this case, it would be a discretionary call, and that call would be to stay with it. Now, without digressing too much into discretion, because there's a lot of stuff we want to get into, just remember that you have to live with your decision, and that's all about life is living with decisions. When I when I bought a pet, or actually this, well, we paid somebody, but it was, a, it was still a rescue. <laughs> That's another story. But uh, when I when I got this dog 13 years ago, because my daughter was crying for the dog, I knew it was getting badly, like George Carlin says. Okay, all trend trades eventually end badly, and I talk about that a lot. So you just know these things are going to happen, and you're willing to accept these things. Now, as far as accepting with a discretionary trade, when you stay with the position. Let's say this thing gaps up 10 points tomorrow. Well, you have to be willing to live with that. You can't have uh, regret with 100% hindsight. As a general statement, a little bit of discretion will help you do well longer term. Now, I can't guarantee you it will always work on the short term, obviously. Now, I want to talk about my thinking on, on puts as a substitution for stock a little bit. And some of these thoughts in here are a little bit in hindsight, but these are things that I'd be that I would look for on the next trade. So if some of this looks like hindsight, I don't want you to think, oh, it's in hindsight because it is. But these are the things that I do look for in trades, and these are some of the ways that I like to play options. Now you want to use, and I put someone in here at the last moment, deep in the money puts as a substitute for stock. I don't go. It, it all depends. Sometimes I'll go fairly deep in the money. But when I'm trading options as a substitution for stock, especially as puts for a substitution for shorty, the main advantage there, as I talked about last week, instead of putting up $32,000 in margin, you're putting up like a thousand bucks, okay? And also, that's the most you could lose. Now, obviously, you don't lose a thousand bucks, but it's a lot better than putting up all that margin and then having a stock, stock gap 20 points against you or whatever the following day. Sometimes though, if you can make it work. Now, if this underlying stock hits the initial profit targets, target, then you wanna bail on half of your options, okay? Or if your options, if you're a little closer to the money and you get a two for one, you go ahead and take partial profit. So uh, for instance, I got in my options at 350. I don't think they went to seven, but I did put in resting orders at seven just for S and G's to see what would happen. So as a, as a general statement, not all the time, but as a general statement, I will put in on most positions, I will put in a limit order to flip out half. Now I don't use limit orders as a general statement. Again, when I'm trading underlying securities, if I'm long something, I, I might use a trailing stop. If I'm trying to squeeze out a little extra profits, I might exit at the market when IPT is hit. And rarely do I actually put in a limit order unless maybe in a case where it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. I'm not sure it's going to get to the IPT. In that case, I might put a limit in. And if it doesn't hit it, I'm ready to get out at the market. So that's um, a general statement of, of how I, I, I manage uh, the, the, um, the money management, okay? So again, and, and again, if the options go two times from where you got in, take off half, and then you free roll on that. And I'll show you that in just one second. And in the other case is, let's say you go deep in the money and you buy an option at 10. Well, it's probably not going to double. But if you're, let's say, at 15, you've got a 50% profit on that option, and you're either hit the IPT or near the IPT, or you're fairly close to the IPT, the move happened really quickly then by all means lock in that 50% gain on half. And then in some cases you wanna possibly roll down. Now consider daily setups once you're in, because the great thing about options is, and you got there's a lot of bad things too, but the great thing about options is you don't have a huge capital outlay. So you can go in and you can do some of these secondary trades, like let's say it sets up as an ogre or a Russian doll, which, which happened on APH and both of those setups. Then you could go in and do some options and maybe some S and G type of options. 
Speaking of S&G type of options, don't go crazy. These are options where you're not paying a whole lot. In this case, uh, 10 and $15 a contract. And like I said to my peeps a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about using some options because I recommended a short, the APH, of course, one of the things I point out was like, look, you could buy two options for 30 bucks. They're out of the money. They probably won't get hit. And if they expire worthless, then instead of having a ribeye on Friday night, which I like to have, I'd sous vide them and then I hit them on the grill really hot. Oh, so good. That and tiger stripe pork chops, which are the prime pork chops. They look like little tiger stripes in them. Hit me up if you need the recipes and the stuff. It's just salt and pepper, really. <laughs> good stuff. But anyway, so instead of having that tiger stripe pork chop, which is just as much as a ribeye, then you just have pizza. The point I'm trying to make is if you're putting up $30 on a trade and it fails miserably, who gives a shit, okay? And this this gentleman in my uh, group, he was a little leery about making his first options trade, and that's why I suggested doing that. Most of the time, those options are going to expire worthless. So again, you know, you have your pizza instead of your steak on your Friday for your Friday night dinner. Now, you want to keep your the, the advantage of options is you're not putting up all that margin. And I'm going to rush through that or go through that fairly quickly in one second, uh, recap some of the stuff we did last week. But your capital outlay needs to be well below what you would risk if you're trading the underlying. Now, you, you potentially could have a bigger loss than the $2,000 per trade per 100K or 2% per trade, however you think your account is, 2% of your account value, trading account. Technically, you could have a bigger loss than that, but as a general statement, usually we could contain the losses to 2%. So if you're trading options, one advantage would be to have your risk actually less than 2%. Now, it does get complicated. Like I said last week, let's say the market goes strongly against you, the options evaporate, and then they expire. Then you got to reset. So you could see you could get into trouble fairly quickly. I don't want to make these things look like some sort of I don't know if panacea is the word, but uh, for lack of a better word, some sort of great thing. They they do have a lot of of issues with them. Tread lightly. Again, maybe do the pizza versus ribeye trade for a while until you get your feet wet. But anyway, like I said last week, so if you were to short 300 shares of the stock, it was round numbers, $19,000 and three options came to $1,000, that's $1,000 cash that comes out of your account, but that's also $1,000 max risk. So you're at about half of your normal risk doing this trade. However, again, time is against you with options, okay? And like I said last week, you always think you put an options position, you're like, oh man, I've got a limited time before you know it, you're, you've got an expiration staring you in the face. But anyway, you could see I bought the three options and then I got the thing. It's like, well, Dave, how am I going to show in this model account that to take profits on? You can't take profits on one and a half option. So I added an extra option and I'll walk you through all the option trades here in one second. Now, here's the thing. In the underlying, there was a $1,500 loss overnight. And and believe me, that's kind of hard to stomach. It's like, oh man, I just got in this trade. I'm already down $1,500. Well, it comes with the territory, okay? And it's something that you have to, again, accept. Yes, I drop F-bombs, I cuss and I fuss, but it's like, well, you know what? What am I supposed to do? This is what I'm supposed to do. So this is what I'm going to do. Now in the options, I didn't check the price on them, but I'm pretty sure they, they didn't completely evaporate, but I'd be willing to bet I probably had an $800 loss or something like that overnight. But it didn't hit the stop. Now, here are all the trades I ended up making. And I realized I went a little crazy. And hopefully, you'll see some of the method to my madness as I go through this. So again, just to remind you, that was the original trade parameters, OK? 300 shares, round numbers, 6.5 protective stop. So. Here are all the initial trades I put on. Now, as these options worked out, I ended up putting on more and more trades as I took trades off. And I'll walk you through that in just one second. But you could see, even with all of my initial buying before I began to start flipping these options out, my risk in the model account came to $1,600, which is nothing to sneeze at, but I'm still below that 2% number, okay, if stopped out. 
And you could see that in this particular case, the original trades were up here. Okay, the three were a substitution for stock, as mentioned earlier. The fourth one I added on shortly thereafter, about uh, 10 minutes later, 10, 11 minutes later. And that's because, again, I wanted a round number so I could show the money management should it work. And thank goodness it did. I did take some S&G trades. I saw these options at $15 an option. These are those pizza versus ribeye options. Good, good chance, really good chance it could expire worthless, but four $15 options, what's that, 60 bucks? It's not gonna kill me, okay? And then the stock made it ogre. I'll show you the pattern in a few minutes. The 60 puts at that point were only 40 cents or $40 a contract. So I figured it was worth a shot as an ogre. And while I was at it, I picked up a couple of more of those 55s. All right, so here are all the trades. And you can see this is all the initial buying here. And as these puts, like last week I showed you, these were bought at 40 and I flipped them out at 80. And I'll show you a spreadsheet in just one second. The stupid spreadsheet took me like four hours to put together. It's like, good Lord. Anyway, this was the original transaction down here to substitute for stock. Again, four options total. And then this is how they played out, knock on wood. So about uh, $500, $800, about $1,100 or so in profits. And that's all, that's completely cashed out. Now, here are all the S&G options. And if you add all of that trading up, and keep in mind that on some of these trades, I was already profitable in other options, okay? And so uh, I know you can't get a little bit pregnant, but I was kind of, uh, feeling flush, okay? And I ended up putting on a few more of these options. But if you add all that up, I think it's only like $150 total. So it's not going to kill me. And and yes, there's a really good chance that these things these things can evaporate quickly or it or expire worthless. And they might expire worthless, okay? It looks like they it doesn't look too good right now. But what I do is I take profits on them and I flip them out. And you can see, if you add all this up, the initial price was, a li was the average price was like about 11 or 12 cents. So not quite a triple, but close to a triple. So it's a one to three free roll. So I made three times my money on these options as I flipped them out. And the money got decent, as you can see down here, where they went up uh, tremendously, okay? And just a, a big profit. So this $150 position, let's see, two, four, five, 300, 800, nine, uh, about a grand, okay? So about $150, and believe me, you can't do this every day, all day. It just worked out really nicely, turned into an extra $1,000. And I still have a couple of these on just for SGs because remember, the initial position, I guess I should have kept three on, but the initial position was a short 300 shares. But as this thing was really moving in my favor and all these trades were working, I was busy just rolling down and buying more and flipping them out at, at profits. So there's all the trades. I don't want to bore, I'm just like, I need, <laughs> working a spreadsheet for four hours and I'm thinking like, I'm going to spend five minutes working on the, uh, presenting this because nobody's going to want to look at a spreadsheet. You know, it's kind of, spreadsheets are kind of like, uh, like, Spreadsheets to me are like Venn diagrams to Kamala. You know, it's kind of like, I, I just like them, but I don't think anybody's into them other than me. I know you want to party with me. So initially, this is where I bought the in the money puts. And of course, we got whacked overnight. Now, it's been said, if you can keep your head while everybody's losing theirs, you obviously don't know what's going on. <laughs> but in trading, especially if you're in options, you know, I'm thinking, ow, oh, this sucks, okay? But I knew I didn't have much more money to lose, okay, because the option was was mostly evaporated, those three in the money puts. And then I see this opening gap reversal. And I'm thinking that this stock is still in trouble. I'm not going to get that excited because this market has gone against me. In fact, I think it's actually an opportunity. Now, don't throw caution to the wind and start averaging down, so to speak, in stocks. That's a bad, that's a bad thing to do. And that's one of the one of my concerns tonight was showing you this because you're like, well, Dave, you averaged down. Yeah, I sort of did, okay. But I had an opening gap reversal 
and then the stock was sort of set up as a as a rush of doll, meaning a pattern within a pattern. It still looked like it was in a lot of trouble. Okay. Okay. Any questions on all that? I know I kind of zip through it. So just following up on ULS, we talked about this one last week. It was a accelerating momentum strategy, first deep pullback in an IPO, first deep retracement. Also, it was nice and persistent. And those were the parameters for the buy. Entry there, stop way down here, IPT way up here. And just to follow up from last week, this is what happened last week. And let's see, we've got a newer chart in here. IPT was here. And again, at the IPT, your stop comes to break even. You will trail a little bit along the way. And then you continue to trail as it moves in your favor. So that was the open profits based on the close I screen captured last week on those 400 shares, the 200 remainder. And in this particular case, I don't remember exactly why. I think I applied a little discretion, might have gotten out a little earlier. or was trying to squeeze a little more profit out of it. But whatever the case may be, I didn't quite make that full $1,000 in the first low. So there it is. I just want to follow up on the remainder of it. So we continue to trail a stop on this. And then we did peak out last week so far, but we're not too far away from that peak. This stock still looks pretty good. And it's really defied gravity in spite of everything going on. I don't want to confuse the issue with facts and see what they do or whatever, because that might get me thinking that maybe it'll continue to defy gravity. But as a trend following moron, I'm just going to continue to follow along with this thing. All right, brief update on the TFM 10% system. So I talked about it last week. So the sell would be here, okay, at 40... 49.32, I believe, would be that number. Now, as long as we could stay above the 50 simple, okay, and while we're hoping for stuff, as long as we stay above the 10% line, that would be great. This line is 10% of the 50-week closing high, minus 10%, okay? So green is within 5% of the 50-week closing high. Five, uh, the pink or whatever that is, light pink is greater than 5% away from the 50-week closing high, and then 10% would be 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high. The bottom of this line here is 10%. And Jeff, who's normally with us on Thursdays, he's here tonight, he pointed out that the 5% line is where he likes to get out of markets. And he's going to get whipsawed a little more than at 10%, but he's also going to get out early. So right here, this would have been a whipsaw for him, 5% drop. Turns out it was only a pullback. This one here didn't quite close below 5%, but so far, that would have been a good place to get out. And of course, we bounced back a little today. How crazy was today? <laughs> it's like, I'm looking at the charts, it's like S&P up, uh, futures up 120 or whatever, and it's an inside day. I mean, that's, a, that's the biggest inside day I ever remember. I know I'm a nerd, <laughs> but you want to party with me, right? Anyway, so the sell's still way down there. And and the reason I like to show this every week is to show you the forest for the trees. I am very concerned about this market. And I'll flesh out some of those concerns in a few minutes, especially when we get to the live charts. However, if you're following this longer term system so far, it looks okay. Let's say you were hand testing this. You wouldn't even notice this, this three little three little weeks down or four little weeks down. It's like, eh. Nothing to worry about, right? But when you're actually in it, uh, you can feel it. Those are the rules. You can find them on my um, YouTube channel, on my website, DaveLeonard.com. And the buys are a little bit more stringent, as I often say. You need two bars of Landry light, lows greater than that 50-week moving average. So that was our last buy there. The NASDAQ triggered and didn't stop out. It came dangerously close to NASDAQ Qs, I should say. And as I've said quite a bit, and I've showed the actual trade not that long ago, but I bought three, I bought 100, I wish I had 300 shares. I bought 100 shares at 319.49. And lately I've been showing you how steep that drawdown is on this system. And today it came back, uh, it was at 14 points or so today. It was something crazy. It's like oh, only 100 shares. Those are starting to be significant swings. $1,400 in one day is nothing to sneeze at, right? Somebody at Facebook said, hey, Dave, uh, are you still in that position? Because it came pretty close to that 50 simple moving average. Well, it, it came close to crossing it. 
you don't sell when it crosses the moving average, you sell when it closes below the moving average. And one of the things that's a little scary is it is based on a calendar week and not a rolling week, okay? So it's based on where the market closes on Friday, okay? So tomorrow looks like, you know, knock on wood, looks like we're gonna have survived another week in this. But it's uh, the drawdown lately has been brutal. What's that, 70 points? So $7,000 drawdown on a silly little 100 share position that I just took for SGs to follow a system and show you what following a system is like. And it's kind of, it's, again, you want a part of it. It's kind of fun because I'm able to show you like, hey, look, I just lost $7,000. Not that I'm excited about that, but it's just to kind of show you that if you are going to get into this longer term trend following, the drawdowns are going to be brutal. And again, as I preach each week, the way I sort of solve for that is by taking profits, obviously partial profits, to get it out of some. And I talked about that over the last several weeks. So go in and, and take a look at the playlist for the week of charts. And the other thing I'm going to start doing, I, start, I thought about this this week, is I'm going to start putting more and more of the methodology in action on YouTube. And I started a playlist. There's only a couple things there. But after this week, we'll have one or two more things there. And each week I'm going to build and build and build on that. So that might be a good way to get your feet wet, checking out the methodology. That and looking at the archives, davelander.com slash archives. And you can see all my recommendations, warts and all, before they actually triggered, right? Anyway, so it did come fairly close to the stop, but it did not close below the 50 simple and the 10% line, okay? But we did trade below 10%, see the bottom, the top of this hot pink is 10%. So we came really close to that last week. And this week, we'll see where we end up tomorrow. We could actually close below 10% and it wouldn't be a sell signal until it closes below the 50 simple. And the reason I'm using that simple moving average in here, I really wanted to try to make a pure system with just percentages, get out of 10%. But I found that I needed a little bit of a whipsaw filter now just, before I digress too much into it, just real quick, or not to digress, I should say, imagine that. The When, you, when it comes to whipsaw filters, you gotta be super careful because you could end up curve fitting to prior data. So put something really simple in there. And you know, here's the thing, and I don't know how to word it eloquently, but I'd rather have a, a mediocre system that has worked over a long period of time than some sort of gee whiz amazing system because that amazing system has likely curve fit itself to the prior data prior data and the future data will not look like the prior data i've got into a a heated discussion with a mechanical system developer years ago <laughs> i said well you know your largest drawdown is always in front of you and he got mad at me and i'm like okay <laughs> but that's another story two drink minimum on that Okay, I want to talk briefly about transitions because now is a, a transitional type of market. And a transition defined is when a market is in an uptrend and then it begins to roll over and then the downtrend begins and we're looking to short that first correction, okay? So that's what we did with the bow tie in the APH and I'm trying to think if there's any other ones. There was none recently, but the mystery chart is um, is a first thrust, which is another, or a pullback, another pattern. For longs, the market goes down, bottoms out, begins an uptrend, and you're looking to get in at that first correction. Now, again, you're not necessarily looking for a deep correction, although sometimes a deep correction can be nice, okay, because it kind of fools a lot of people. But the reason you're looking to get on that internet first little correction is because sometimes a market rolls over, Excuse me, because I wolfed down a chicken breast <laughs> at one minute before I came in. I was like, well, I forgot to eat something. Anyway, the reason you're getting at that first little correction is because let's say a market begins to roll over and then it begins to rally up. Those people who were long at the top or just got, especially the Johnny come lately, okay? They're, they're fickle and they have very little staying power mentally and monetarily. And if the market begins to rally, they're going to breathe a collective sigh of relief and maybe anybody else who's long too is going to feel better like aha it's going up you have that selective perception or perceptual distortion depends on how you want to frame it and you're thinking okay this market's going back up and if it rolls right back over 
then they're caught off guard, okay? Remember all this technical analysis, at least from my standpoint, the trading simplified, which I had trademarked, is keeping things simple and using those patterns to recognize the psychology of the players. And we're using, we're taking, um, sounds kind of mean when you say it like that, but we're using the psychology against them, okay? Hey, believe me, it doesn't always work, okay? A lot of times, you uh, you have bad trades, okay? Anyway, the one thing I wanted to point out is sometimes it's it's more of a process where a market just kind of gradually rolls over. So that's kind of what happens with the process type of top or bottom. It's kind of like gradual, 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 and then the market really takes off. So it could also be an event, and that's where a market goes sharply lower. Usually something like a bow tie is more of a process type of top. And a first thrust is more of an event. First thrust is just thrust is just a sharp thrust, easy for me to say, lower. And you're looking to play that first pullback or a sharp thrust higher, as illustrated below. And you're looking to play over here on the right side. And you're looking to play that first little pullback that happens. So process versus an event. Bow ties over here is a general statement. First thrust over here. But like if you go back to the APH, it was both because it was such a quick rollover. The bow ties caught up quickly. And a lot of times you don't want to sit around and wait for that bow tie, especially if, if the market has a sharp move lower. You want to play that first thrust instead. So I'll flesh out more and more transitions. And if and I actually don't want the market to go down, right? But if we do go down, obviously, and uh, you can't be, as I say, if you can't be in the trend you love, love the trend you're in, right? Anyway, so I'll flesh out more of those as they as they develop. Okay, just I want just one little thing I want to cover this week on a million little things, and and then I want to shift gears and get into the market. So I wanted to cover all the other stuff too first. Just one thing I wanted to mention this week, and next week we'll pick it up, and I'll I'll have more and more to say about this. I've been keeping a list of these things, but just to recap quickly, everyone thinks when they become a trader they'll we they'll we they will become a trader and you'll have this big epiphany and like okay i'm i'm a big trader now and uh i guess i'm a pretty big trader 270 something pounds depends on how much drinking i do on the weekend and how much moving i do uh but i'm solid i'm pretty solid anyway everyone thinks it's going to be this big epiphany in reality it's a million little things, taking the partial profits, accepting what the market does, um, cataloging what's going on in your life. Did uh, any of your chickens get murdered this week? And the other one's maimed pretty bad. He's looking kind of rough or she's looking kind of rough. Uh, did you have to put a dog down at the emergency vet at 2 a.m.? You know, just all these little things add up and you have to be cognizant of all these little things. Oh, here's another one. Did the brokerage go down right in the middle of the biggest crash that you've seen in a long, long, long time, right after you put on a bunch of positions. But uh, that's going to get me really pissed off. <laughs> uh, I actually saw, it must have been a, a, a big deal because I saw memes. I was so pissed off. I was, I couldn't get into one account where I had to take action. And I just shut everything down and rebooted my PC thinking that would happen. And, and that ended up locking me out of another account. And it was just, uh, it was not a good day. <laughs> my wife, I heard a lot of F-bombs coming from there. Like, yes, you did. All right, number 726976. You want to listen to the database. This is one I want to just get out real quick this week because I think it's relevant. And then we'll hop into the charts. And that's where I really want to spend some time tonight. In my Landry list, this is a list of stocks I publish every night. And these are all setups, okay? And I'll pick one or two or like if in, in fantastic markets, I might pick more than two that I want to trade. And I'll show them to you and I'll give you the parameters. This is all part of my trading service. DaveLandry.com slash trading service. If you want to see more on that, DaveLandry.com slash archives. If you want to see what I've recommended for years and years and years. Again, warts and all. But I flagged the ones that are potential shorts. And notice tonight, there's only one potential long, and I wasn't too excited about going after it. And so the, the mystery chart is one of these shorts. 
uh, potential shorts and will probably be revisiting them. So the database right now is saying that the short side is the place to play. If you only have one or two stocks, there's been a few nights where I've had zero in the Landry list after going through 2,000 stocks. So that's not the time you want to be trading when you can't find a setup to save your life. As I've said a thousand times, and that'll be a thousand and one, I remember in 2007 when the market was still making these all time highs, I couldn't find a short, uh, a long, I'm sorry, let me rewind that. I remember in 2007 when the market was making all time highs, back in I think October or something, I couldn't find a long setup to save my life. And I actually apologized to clients for showing shorts as the market was making these all time highs. And then what happened? Well, market rolled over. That doesn't always happen, and there's no guarantees in this business, believe me, but it was one point in my life that really stuck out that made me think, you know what, I better listen to this database. I hope this market goes straight back up. Right now, the database is saying that it is not. We'll see. So again, land your list and all but one were flagged as potential shorts. All right, I'm gonna shift gears and we'll hop in to crypto. If there's any crypto pairs you guys want to want me to take a look at, I'll be happy to do that now. All right, any crypto pairs you guys want to look at? So crypto has been a bit of a bummer. Although uh, somebody just slapped Bitcoin in the ass. Look at that, wow. Look at that trend, it's huge. <laughs> I might have to buy some Bitcoin tonight. So that's looking pretty impressive. I'm waiting for all this to show up over here. Wow, this is super impressive. When did this happen? This happened. This happened. Let me take a look at a, a five minute chart. Yeah, that happened uh, not that long ago. Okay. So, pretty impressive run. Now, look at that. Nice landry night, light, nice little pullback. Let's see what the 30 looks like. So, I was going to say, hey, crypto's not looking so great, but uh, all of a sudden it's waking up in here. One thing I like to do, obviously, is pay attention to what's happening in Bitcoin because as goes the Bitcoin show, it sounds like sound like the uh, the old people, the Bitcoin. As goes the Bitcoin, as so goes the shit coins. <laughs> uh, it's obviously a bellwether, but boy, it's pushing into this uh, overhead supply. Ethereum, not so hot. You can see so far just kind of pulling back. Ethereum looks more like a short. That a long Bitcoin, by the way, not nothing you want to go long unless you're doing an intraday trade just yet. For me to get excited about Bitcoin, believe it or not, I'd have to make all-time highs or at least get above 72,000, which I think is all-time highs, right? Yeah, so it would have to make all-time highs, but that's looking pretty good. As I've said a thousand times, when these things are really running, sometimes you could just come in here and look for the stronger pairs and buy them if they're banging out brand new highs. Right now, they're probably not gonna bang out new highs, but if they're hitting uh, fairly serious new highs without a whole lot of overhead supply, then they might be worth a shot. So uh, one of the million little things is always do your homework, right? And I haven't, I, I thought about that today. It's like, I'm not practicing when I preach, preach, I haven't paid a lot of attention to crypto lately because Bitcoin has been doing so poorly and most of these shit coins have been doing poorly too. And there's really nothing here that I'm seeing that I have to go after. But who knows? These things could wake up, could start forming some of those aforementioned transitional patterns, and they might be worth a shot. All right. Any individual pairs in the crypto you guys want me to look at? I'd be happy to do that now. If not, I'm going to go ahead and shift gears and we'll hop into stocks. And we could always shift back to. So one thing I was going to say about crypto, and it looks like it's it's uh, changing tonight at least, but one thing, my hopes early on with crypto was that it would trade um, with negative correlation to stocks. So if the market wasn't doing fantastic, maybe we can go long Bitcoin, okay, instead of going long the market when the market was underperforming. But unfortunately, there was a high correlation between Bitcoin and stocks. And we could plot those charts next week. And if you want to plot them on your own, you could just put a symbol, a colon, and then another symbol. And like you'd put uh, like uh, dollar sign SPX, colon, dollar sign BTC, USD, and stock charts. I guess I could have done it the whole time I 
spent uh, talking about that. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at the overall markets. And I know there's a lag on on YouTube, so uh, feel free to if you feel free to uh, ask questions, even if it's something that uh, we may have covered a little while ago. All right, S&P 500. Look at this, okay? Look at that. Look at that. It was huge today, up 119, 120 round number, okay? What this is. 120 points, which is ludicrous, right? Even ludicrous would say that's ludicrous. But it's an inside day. How crazy is that? We didn't take out yesterday's high. Now, here's the thing that's a bit of a bummer. We could retrace quite a bit, maybe even all the way to the 50 simple or more, okay? And this market would still be in trouble. So that's a concern. Again, we, on a weekly basis, still looks okay. On a daily basis, not looking so hot. I have a, a client in Facebook, Jim. He likes to look at the four-hour charts, okay? Now, he's going to catch turns long before everybody else. Unfortunately, kind of like Jeff with the 5%, he's going to get whipsawed a little bit more, too. So can you get a four-hour? Here's a four-hour. Okay, this is kind of cool. Um, not a perfect bow tie, but you can see we bow tied on a four-hour chart way back here at uh let's say mid 50 5500 so so that would have given you a signal a little earlier it looks like you would have faked you out a little bit to the upside what did i say earlier all shorts go against you before the market rolled over so you'd have been in a lot sooner or out a lot sooner depending on on how you do that okay how you played that all right let's take a look at the nasdaq nasdaq look at that inside day up 464 points and still an inside day i know it's crazy right <laughs> downtrend proper order uh p's didn't tag the 200 the 200 in the p's just real quick is right around it's something i was talking about in the weekend charts and with to my clients also a lot of times technicals come together at the same point so the 200 moving average will often correspond with uh, support or resistance depending on how you look at that depending on where the market is if it's above it, it'll be support. If it's below it, it'll be resistance, obviously. But you can see it's like right around that area. It's like the old Cajun joke about the thermos. It, it keeps the hot things hot. It keeps the cold things cold. How do we know, you know? But anyway, a lot of technicals do come together at the same point. But you can see NASDAQ Composite, same sort of action there too. Support right around this area here. Where did it find support? 200-day moving average. By the way, I normally don't plot the 50 to 200 because I feel like they only matter when they matter, okay? I pay attention to the 30 EMA mostly. I throw bow ties in when the market begins to make a transition. And I also, at that point in time, throw the 50 in. And as I said earlier, this is what I was talking about, the angle of inflection. Notice the sharp angle of inflection with these bow ties going into that 50 simple moving average. So pay attention to that. That usually can tell you the veracity if that's the word of the trend change nasdaq's going to have its work cut out for it like the peas it could go up a long 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 ways and still be in trouble i was explaining to somebody in the gym uh, and it's an adage i got from linda rasky i asked her about it she said she probably picked it up on the floor it's a florism is what she said but the market will do what it has to do to frustrate the most amount of people and cause the most pain okay so if the market is going to sell off okay and it looks like it's going to sell off what's it going to do first okay it'll always the other corollary to that is the market will do the obvious in an unobvious manner so if it looks like we're headed lower what's going to happen first the market's going to have a big up thrust first okay and that up thrust is going to make all the people who bought late because you know i'm kind of a man on the street kind of guy now and I, well, I've always been, but now that I'm getting out, I'm getting more feedback from people. And a lot of people were like, is it too late to get in? It's too late to get in. So so that made me realize you got Johnny Come Lately's out there. A lot of people were like, how about that in the video? It's like when the man on the street starts telling you about an individual stock, it's probably done. Okay, stick a fork in it. But anyway, so all these people, I could tell just from the feeling I'm getting that a lot of people bought late in the cycle. And they're waiting for that rally to come back. And a lot of people tell me, well, as soon as it rallies up a little bit, I'm going to get out. That's your technical analysis right there. So 
There's no guarantees, obviously, but that would cause the most amount of pain. And by the way, when you're looking at charts, always ask yourself, what's the most obvious thing this chart would likely do? And then how's what's the most unobvious way for it to do that? So a market will often do the most obvious thing in the most unobvious manner. And a market will do what it has to do, cause the most pain to the most amount of people. Those are, see, that's the third adage tonight I said is uh, true. That's, that's another adage or two adages there that are true. Anyway, NASDAQ has its work cut out for it. By the way, if you want me to look at some individual stocks or any other markets, start punching them in now. As you go through the database, we just talked about Bitcoin, so we'll look at some other ones in here. Here's the internet. You can see it's rolled over, beginning to pull back a little bit. This does not look good. Bow tie to the downside. That's uh, no bueno, as we say, south of the border. Broker dealers, big first thrust down. I actually have some, or I have two setups tonight in broker dealer, which we might go after over the next few days. I'll give you a hint. They're two big brokerages, so take a look at those. Software is no bueno. You can see it's broken down in here, big fat gap down. Retrace the 200 day moving average. Every little trouble getting through that, so that's not looking good. Rusty looked fantastic about two weeks ago, right? Starts banging out these multi-year highs, but came right back in. And now anybody who bought all excited about this breakout is now losing money. And they might be looking to get out of break even. So I'm sounding a little bit bearish than I thought I was, <laughs> but I'm actually pretty bearish that I'm talking about this out loud. But I'm a trend following moron. So if it goes straight back up, then I'll just start getting long again. But right now you have to play the hand that's dealt. And here's the bummer, okay? You had you had the old leaders like the mags, right? They were just kind of going straight up. The Nvidia's of the world, they're just going straight up, like, oh, it's gonna be fantastic. Let's project this out. I'm gonna be up 200% by the end of summer or whatever, okay? And then those things just went <laughs> imploded, right? Well, the good news was that banks in these boring areas, many other boring areas, insurance, uh, REITs, utilities all sort of going straight back up and then what happened they just imploded so it looked like we could have this massive sector rotation from momentum to value momentum becomes value and value becomes momentum i can't even remember his name john uh, i could see his face john lewis from the uh, nasdaq did a, uh, gave a great speech a while back on that and uh that's kind of an interesting thing. So all the banks, begin to, you know, massive, massive sector rotation, but all that sector rotation did absolutely nothing. So it was a big uh, kind of uh, effing, for lack of a better word. <laughs> all these sectors, these new sectors begin to take off, giving, giving everybody hope, like, okay, well, that's okay. I don't, I'll just buy First Bank or whatever bank, a regional bank or whatever. I'll sell my Nvidia and buy some banks. I don't care what I'm in as long as it goes up, right? At least that's my mantra. Well. They didn't go up. It, it, here's the great thing from where I stand is I didn't see a lot of setups or any worthwhile setups because the market went straight up. Remember, I play pullback, so it pulled back, but it kept pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. Okay, so anyway, uh, old tech or old leaders, I should say, like the semis. You know, it wasn't that long ago. When was that? Uh, just way back in July. July seems like it was a long time ago, right? Middle of July, July 11th, we had all-time highs in the semis, and we pretty much imploded since then, okay? Again, notice the angle of inflection into that 50-day simple moving average, and we've gone all the way down to 200, and now we're pulling back a little bit. So this is another ugly chart. I know, I'll put on my Captain Obvious hat. Let me give me a little Captain Obvious hat. Home builders, kind of the same theme as everything else. Like, okay, we'll play the home builders. Look at these guys acting like crazy momentum stocks going straight up. But then notice, okay, as they begin pulling back, it's like, okay, I'll start to see some setups here. But then they upload it right back down. And that's why you wait for an entry. I forgot to do it, but uh, was it two weeks ago? We had a stock on the Landry list. Wasn't an re official recommendation, but it was set up, and then uh, it imploded overnight. But luckily, it didn't rally up and trigger in case somebody was going to take it. Anyway, Home Builders Financial, same sort of story there. They took off off of the races, 
made a smart little double top and then imploded. And now they got their work cut out for them. So you kind of get the idea. That's kind of a reoccurring theme without going through any more. I think that pretty much wraps it up. So I think we're, we're in trouble now. Check back often. Watch the market in a minute every day. It's like, yeah. people come up to me every day at the gym kind of like thinking to myself like if only there was a one minute video you can watch and i would tell you everything that i'm getting ready to tell you <laughs> but i don't know people would rather be uh spoon-fed stuff which is fine i guess all right uh any stocks you guys want to talk about quite a bunch tonight. i know it's mostly shorts likely i can't imagine anybody would have any longs that would be worth looking at but uh stranger things have happened all right Going once, going twice. All right, obviously I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. Thank you, uh, thank all you boys and girls here tonight. Anything unanswered, you can shoot me an email at davidavelandry.com. God willing, and uh, if no more pets get murdered or, or have to be euthanized, uh, I will be here again next Thursday doing this again. We'd love to have you live. davelandry.com slash webinar to join us. Like the video on YouTube. YouTube, if you like it. If you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. I'm half kidding. <laughs> and I hope to see all you guys and girls again next week. And may the trend be with you. Thank you so much. And I'll see everybody else. Oh, you're welcome, Jeff and Mark and Matt. I'll see all you guys, uh, most of you guys tomorrow on Facebook too. All right. Everybody have a great weekend. See you again next Thursday. Thank you.